Hi, welcome back to my channel Edis English Literature. Today we are going to discuss about the origin of English language. It's a vast, it's gigantic subject. discussion with lot of ifs and buts, with lot of academic inputs and other things can be carried out in our discussion. But such a plenty of time as well as expertise I don't have. Simply speaking, language is uh, a subject which also covers uh, a vast section of history, a linguistic part as well as literature part. So I am just giving you a shadow idea that how English language is expanding it, has started its journey and truly expanding. So to understand the English language or how the making of the English language is possible, you must have to understand uh, one simple thing. Have you ever seen a river? Yes, the flow of the river or the very making of the river into a river full of life, making a civilization, destroying a civilization, such the history and its entire courts, so many buildings, so many destructions and so many twists and turns from that origin how it meets its destination at the very end is as colorful as destructive as monotonous as interesting such is the case of language development and english language is no um, uh, except exception in this case so um, english language if i say uh, has its own beauty has its own uh, cultural as well as um, linguistic development is it it's a simple expansion but i will rather say that english language has its own influential development how the different political as well as social uh, history has changed the course of the development of the language and how the present english is possible out of so many of the changes and so many of the um, try to explain you one thing uh, that uh, possibility of the uh, development of any language uh, does not depend uh, in a single factor. Uh, a major historical boost historical or changes some. or some social political changes might have its beginning, but uh, the very beginning of the language cannot be traced. Even though linguist has uh, toiled much to find out where from it comes from, they have tried to locate the very origin of it, but it is yet unknown or unseen by us that where from exactly the language, any of the language has been originated. So studying the English language um, in particular, I must say that linguistic uh, definition of the origin of the English language or a um, academic idea of how English language has been originated. Um, has been given a, a meaningful expansion through a hypothesis and that hypothesis is there had been a language originally uh, which is called um, Indo-European language or Iranian language. The language uh, is fictitious. Somewhere in the uh, way back 5000 years or 6000 years back uh, there had been a wanderer there had been some wandering tribes uh, who were roaming into the um, Middle East of Asia as well as Eastern part of Europe. And these people uh, spoke in the same language. One language, one part of the language developed Sanskrit and the list of uh, Indian uh, languages. And another part uh, developed into Armenian, into Greek, into Albanian, into Italy into Slavic, into primitive Germanic, then Celtic. So all such divisions are different pockets, different tribal settlement and different linguistic development were possible. Now uh, as this uh, different uh, linguistic settlement was there, Gradually, as there were no communication either between them or as they geographically living afar, 
So separately these linguistic development were possible and as our discussion is mainly on primitive Germanic from where uh, the English language has been originated. Uh, you can well see in the diagram that primitive Germanic has been bisected into Gothic, Scandinavian and West Germanic. The West Germanic which had been into three sections Old, High as well as Anglo-Saxon. Now this Anglo-Saxon developed into Middle English then it matures into Modern English. So the linguistic list is very clear that all these divisions, the further divisions that is Indian Sanskrit group of languages, Armenian, Greek, Albanian, Italian, Balto Slavic and Primitive Germanic as well as Celtic have some common traits in them and that common made uh, the linguist to make a theorem that the origin of those languages had the single one and they refer it to be uh, Indo-European language or Aryan group of language. Now, I am coming to discuss you how this uh, Germanic group of or Germanic group of language or a language that has been spoken in Germany has become the part of uh, English and that is quite interesting uh, political as well as uh, social aspects of explanations. And the origin of English language if we can trace uh, is uh, with that of the invasions of the barbaric people from Germany. So the English uh, who were there, the Britons who were there originally uh, had lost, had lost everything, their cultural, their linguistic entity uh, earlier, earlier, already there had been Roman rules for 500 years. So uh, during the Roman rules, they had lost their cultural as well as linguistic entity. And due to that loss, there had been a vacuum in them. Britons, original Britons, the inhabitants of the uh, that land where uh, the British present live. Uh, so now those Britons had lost their cultural entity there by the constant invasion by the Roman Empire as Rome had ruled them for 500 years. After the Rome uh, just left those place or Roman rules become loose at those entity, uh, the Germanic warriors, uh, three tribal groups, uh, three barbaric people from Germany, that, that phrase should be quite uh, true enough because these German tribes were very fierce not only in their warring capability as well as in their, in their navigation. So they were good warriors, good uh, um, seafarers. So these particular traits made them advanced in um, terms of taking control of the this particular pocket of England. Now they came into the, this vacuum and after the fall of the Roman Empire as it happens, the helpless and quite unprepared the states had been into the case of Britons. They were under the rule of Britain, Roman Empire as the Roman left. So they had, had been a kind of ruler-less people. A kind of anarchy had been there and in these loopholes the Germanic tribes as we all know Jutes, Angel, Angels and Saxons came into the control of Britain. But what we are uh, calling the Britain is quite uh, some of the sects uh, settled into the uh, mountains of Wales, deep mountains of Wales some uh, some even uh, settled into the um, Holland 
into the Netherlands, province of Netherlands. So, into the English and suburb areas, these uh, tribes settled. And the original inhabitants that we are calling Britons, they littered either and thither. And neither uh, their cultural entity had been intact by these inhabit by these invasions and they gradually uh, they intermingles with these three kinds of tribes, tribes. Uh, who were re re living in remote and unknown place a group of such people uh, they were speaking in the related same language and lived among the sea coast northern sea coast and the territory that we are now calling a kind of a Denmark settlement and they are to occupied and it was being occupied by this German and this Germanic tribe Jutes. The westward journey was made by uh, now in the part of uh, Holland or Netherlands um, and in that way uh, the anglo saxons somehow settled. Now. Uh, Anglos and Saxons and Jutes have their own pockets of settlement in England and gradually their linguistic development started flourishing and it intermingled with the social culture of theirs and gradually there had been a prospect of creating a new language and that is English. These tribe, tribal peoples, Jutes, Saxons, and angles had uh, no such common platform where, where from we can judge them that they were speaking a same language neither they have the same culture but they were having the same geographical location nearby so somehow these wanderers these nomadic people settled a settled they settled in a nearby location that we call present England is going to develop is in its baby stretch in its infancy all those peoples of the Jude settlement as well as Sang Ang Anglos and Saxons and all are speaking different dialects and all of those dialects having their own importance in their own way because they are social and political as well as in terms of their strength they are as now and the english that we are speaking or the old english whose was the old english the language of the jutes were gradually uh, minimizing its power at by trade and by war instincts war instincts anglo-saxons were getting prominence so their language preoccupies the entirety but it is not correct that their language has ousted other languages or other dialects rather gradually slow by slow these uh, tribes uh, uh, till to the Chosarian period in the Chosarian text you can also find out uh, the divisions of linguistic variation or variation of the English dialects. Yeah. Now these uh, Jutes who went to the southeast corner uh, they become uh, Kentis rather they, uh, they settled towards the region called Kent the Saxons who, who were living nearby the Thames and the angels in the northern part so they develops into divergent dialects and had a cultural harmony together and gradually gradually slow by slow these Saxon people and the Anglic people's dialect get prominence whereas in their dialect and gradually evolving that dialect into a standard form of language it 
become a possibility that a fruitful ground of developing a language is gradually moving towards a success. Yes, that success was the formation of Old English. The modern term that we find in English was nowhere there, but e, the modern English that we speak has its origin in that Old English. And that remote past is very much attached to the modern English. Now, making this discussion a full circle, you must understand what twist and turns, which weather, what settlement, what political reasons, what geopolitical reasons, as well as what linguistic twist and turn has developed and matured English the English we speak now. So, to make that discussion further, I will add some points here. The English language that we speak today would have been non-existent if the flow of the stream that I talked about earlier while giving you a metaphor how the language has been development developed through a metaphor of river if the flow of water ends the development yeah. into its maturity of making a civilization or the possibility of its own existence is under danger and such is the case with language if there is no constant political development, social development, linguistic fusion, the language would be gradually going towards a dead lane and it will be the death of the language. It is a prolonged history of political and social events and in the course of Indian history, so profoundly, so profoundly it hammers into the English people's nationalistic life or national life and it becomes recognizable in every pockets of its linguistic variation that says it simply the language was rolling on and that roll on language becomes dynamic and that dynamic quality makes it a world. A simplest to the simple explanation of the linguistic development can have its ready-made references when I say that English should have been a dead language if hundred years of war or war of roses had its result in other way. Why I say so? We will understand it later. Even if I say that Britons, Britons who were driven away by Jutes and Saxons after the Roman uh, left from British Saint, if the history happened to be other, there had not been any English language. Even the English that we are speaking today or we are evolving today by newer ways and it has become a world language is yes, if there had not been any industrial revolution, any renaissance or any colonization. So these political histories has made the development of English language possible and shape it as we are reading it or learning it. The major political development that happens uh, the first of all, the Britons were under the Roman rules. That was definitely that had uh, made them or crippled them or politically ruined them at the very beginning. The self-identity of theirs were ruined by Roman settlement. It was a fact. The second had been that we are speaking so long the three Germanic tribes came into Britain and they remained there, settled there and become as a inhabitants of Britain. So even though they came from foreign, they were 
uh, living in uh, British soil and find themselves akin to their identity. Now another major shift comes when slowly and slowly the missionary culture came in and the Christianity were shaping up the European history and it is true for England too. English language were greatly influenced by Bible and Christian texts. In fact, the expansion of Christianity was possible by transferring that Latin text into English so that it can reach into the common people. Next. Came in the Norman conquest, then come the Renaissance period, revival of the era, industrial revolution. We can also mention that uh, just after the Victorian era, there had been the colonization period, British Empire started exploring in search of new market, in search of new colony. And finally, in the modern period, the science, the technological flourish, as well as the global economy has made everything so enriching and made this world as if a single village where everything is possible nearby. English or the knowledge of English or the English as a language has its own expansion. It becomes reachable to world and English the language becomes a medium to reach through the entire world, throughout the entire world. And the world words, if I say, even at the modern period, at the very the present age, the so-called cold word, as well as uh, the terrorism or all such things, political aspects of all those happenings has made English a, a statement or made English a particular political position which can have its saying. Uh, these are another segment for discussion how the modern language, modern uh, state of affairs is affecting English language. But I must say each and every political aspects or economical aspects, particularly one notable point is economic importance of change has made a mammoth course of action for developing English language. Of course, all these things cannot be covered up in a single lecture, but it is quite right that your understanding of the inflow of the English language as it develops through uh, will make your understanding of the English literature more fruitful, more uh, yielding uh, one. Giving a full lecture on English language and its development in a single class is quite difficult as and it should not be uh, a judicial one. So I will carry forward this lecture in later half uh, of my sage, uh, but you can follow by part in the Old English, in the Middle English, in the Victorian English in the later half of British English and how it has been influencing the course of its development and make this discussion fruitful further. So you can have uh, this kind of lectures if you follow this series. So most welcome if you subscribe here and like and comment if you have any query. Thank you. Bye-bye.